every concert so far has just been, I mean, I will say we had, we had, we had time. It, it felt like we, we used as much time as we could and, you know, we were really cramming in as much detail as we possibly could in every second. On the stage, in the concerts, the, the feeling is just of constant rediscovery every night, I have to say. From the first notes on Saturday night, I was just dumbstruck by this kind of level of energy and freshness and commitment and these textures that sort of come at you from all these various levels. And Francis' engagement was unbelievable. I'm hearing new textures, I'm hearing new balances between instruments, incredible interplay between the piano and winds, which I've never felt so vividly before this time, even though we're quite far away from one another. The, the beauty in some of the slow movements has just been absolutely staggering. The fourth concerto was so touching yesterday. Not just us, but but what I get from my colleagues and what I get from France, and, and it, it's been so terrific to do these pieces again. France's ability to tame some of my tendencies and perhaps our wish to enliven and, and make more cheeky certain details and, and this kind of interplay that I actually see, I mean, with France sitting across from me. It's just, it's a kind of communication that I've never had in these pieces. The orchestra is around in this kind of, this sort of theater of the round type of thing where everyone is communicating in, in this sort of circle of intensity. It's been, it's been so fantastic. The fifth concerto returns in a way to the kind of heroic bacchanal quality that we see in the C major, but of course the scale of the thing is just so much bigger. We have a piece that's almost 40 minutes long. First time that Beethoven wasn't able to premiere one of his concertos himself. And I think this is, I, I think we can't imagine how heartbroken Beethoven must have been by this. His whole personality, his whole identity in Vienna at this time was tied up to the keyboard concerto. And I think it must have been deeply heartbreaking and unbelievably hard for him to handle that this, suddenly this connection with the piano was no longer there. Sometimes I'll just look at France and he'll... Just very small gestures. Even in a concert yesterday, I just, there's a slight hand gesture or a kind of exhalation of, of, of breath, you, you know, as if he's expressing something from, from the dark past as a recorder or, or flute player. These little details count so much. And they actually, in context, they are exponentially so great because suddenly we all are aware of a new detail and it makes us play better and in a more inspired way it's just it's fascinating it's so amazing what actually happens on the stage And again, in the slow movements of all of these pieces, Beethoven reserves, reserves a very distinct character for each of these pieces. I mean, we have a B major kind of hymn-like religious quality to this slow movement in Opus 73 that you don't see in any of the other concertos.
it, it's just to play all of them in three days especially it's just it, it, it's, it's mind blowing it really is so vivid five steps into <laughs> Five steps into five steps. What is the word I'm looking for? It's on the tip of my tongue. Oh my goodness. It's just the most extraordinarily revolutionary and forward-looking music. Apotheosis is the word I wanted to find. This sense of, of kind of spiritual transcendence in a way. Um, through, through a course of five very, very discrete and distinct narratives. Apotheosis. Um, and so I think, yeah. Five steps to apotheosis. Every one of them is a sort of is 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 a is a theatre unto itself. Mm -hmm. 